the Prophet ﷺ said, No musa'imi ibadah. A fasting person sleep is worship as well. Every because you're in a perpetu- if fasting is a worship, you're perpetually in a state of worship as long as you're hungry. Until iftar. So even when you sleep, it's a worship. That doesn't mean that you just sleep. <laughs> right? But it's to say that at least that's the safeguard against doing anything wrong. Against doing anything wrong, so you're better off sleeping. Alhamdulillah, الذي أعظم على عباده المنة لما دفع عنهم كيد الشيطان وفنة ورد أمله وخيب ظنة إذ جعل الصوم حصنا لأوليائه وجنة وفتح لهم به أبواب الجنة وعرفهم أن وسيلة الشيطان إلى قلوبهم الشهوات المستكنة وأن بقمعها تصبح النفس المطمئنة ظاهرة الشوكة ذا ظاهرة الشوكة في قسم خصمها قوية المنة والصلاة والسلام على محمد قائد الخلق وممهد السنة وعلى آله وأصحابه ذوي الآراء الثاقبة والعقول المرجحنة so alhamdulillah we're going to go a bit before Ibn Ata'illah to Imam Ghazali Ihya Ulum al has a beautiful chapter on fasting so I thought it's a good time uh, to speak about that because the book of wisdom doesn't have any direct uh, most of them are related to enhancing our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there's no direct uh, fasting aphorisms. So I thought, let me look at what Imam Ghazali is, uh, has said about this. So, he's a uh, wonderful take on fasting, and inshallah, we hope that that will increase and enhance our fasting this Ramadan and make this Ramadan better than any before it, inshallah. So, this is something very interesting. He starts off right at the beginning, and uh, he says that all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who showered his mighty blessings on um, on his servants? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who took the shaitan away from us. He's the one when we call on to him, he will take shaitan away, and especially in Ramadan, he will take him away. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has caused the shaitan to fail with regards to his righteous people. So all praises to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for that. How did he do this? Through Ramadan, through fasting. Because fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a very strong fortress and a shield against all the evil that is out there. Then, then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan, what he's done is that he's opened for them the doors of paradise. And then he's told them, through fasting, he's taught humans that shaitan gets a greater influence over you through the desires that you fulfill so that's why in Ramadan the main focus is to uh, to control the desires as much as possible so that's why it then says that if you do manage to control your desires then ultimately you will end up with the tranquil heart al nafsul mutmainna and <clears throat> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his blessings on our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then he says, Imam Ghazali says that in Nasoma Rubu al Iman, this is a major claim. He says that fasting is a quarter of Iman. How does fasting become a quarter of Iman? And he says that is based on something the Prophet said. I'm not making this up. This is something what the Prophet said. The Prophet said, A sawmu nisfu sabr. Fasting is half of patience. So the patience that a human has to undertake fasting is half of patience fasting is all patience in fact but the amount that is being mentioned here is fasting is half of patience and that is a hadith of Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and another hadith then tells us that a sabru nisful iman so fasting is half of patience this hadith then tells us that patience is half of iman so now you do the equation and it comes out to a quarter of Iman 
Because fasting is half patience, patience is half of Iman, so that makes fasting a quarter of Iman. Imam Ghazali, mashallah, st- statistics, maths, logic, mantik, puts it all together and comes up with this conclusion. This final hadith, a sabru nisful iman, is related by Abu Nu'im in his Hilya and others. Then he says, <coughs> the other thing which is amazing about fasting is that it's the one specific worship which has a very unique connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unique attribution to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from among all the other worships. Again, he's not making any of this up. He says, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in, in what the Prophet ﷺ told us, Hadith Qudsi, that كُلُّ حَسَنَةٍ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَارِهَا إِلَى سَبْعِ مِئَةِ ضِعْفِ إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ Every worship that we do, every worship, salat, zakat, hajj, etc., every, everything else, there's a range of rewards you get from the base reward up to 700,000. 700 multiplication of 700,000. <clears> Except fasting. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give you the equation for fasting. He doesn't give a number. He says, فَإِنَّهُ li." Fasting is for me. وَأَنَا أَجْزِيبِهِ I got a direct reward for that. The angels are not responsible for that. They don't have a score sheet for that. Fasting is mine. I give reward for that. There must be more than 700,000 then. We, we just get a sneak peek. We, we get an idea. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> increases the obligations that any religious person is going to fulfill anyway like his uh, fasting. Um, any decent person is going to do fast, right? They're going to make salat. But in Ramadan, all of those are multiplied 70 times. That just gives us an understanding of how much Allah wants to just give even for obligations. Forget optional acts. These are for obligations you have to do anyway. So, <clears throat> now we're going to try to, Imam Ghazali says, he's going to try to explain how much this might be. How much Allah is willing to give here or has promised to give. So he says then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ If fasting is half of patience. Now let's look at what Allah says about patience in the Quran. He says that sabirun, the, the patient ones, they're going to be given full, full, full reward without any number. So there is no number here. It's just this huge, immense amount of reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is literally just going to shower upon the person. More than you can even imagine. It's that. Now since fasting is half of sabr, then that means its reward goes beyond any kind of enumeration. It's just, it, th- th- there's no enumeration for it. Another thing to understand, he, then he says, if you want to really understand the status of fasting, is look at this hadith of Rasulullah in which the Prophet wasallam said that the one in whose, by the one in whose hand is my nafs and my life, the smell, the odor coming from the mouth of a fasting person is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than pure musk, than the fragrance of musk. I mean, you really, I mean, don't just read it as just some kind of, you know, great statement. It's like the odor of a fasting person. And when I was in America, everybody was very careful about their breath. They were very conscious of their breath. In England, I don't think too many people, some people maybe, but in America, everybody's like, they, they stand away from you because they think they've got bad breath or something. Everybody's so conscious of it. And especially in Ramadan, it's like they're always asking, can we brush our teeth, please? Uh, well, you can brush your teeth if you want to, but you just can't use toothpaste. Like fra- flavored toothpaste, you know, for instance, you can use siwak, you can use a dry brush, no problem. But Allah loves the smell from a fasting person. It's not the smell that He loves, it's what that represents before anybody thinks that what kind of an odor must that be. It's the whole point to show that even the minimal aspect of that, that others may be turned away from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I love you for everything. You're fasting. That is so amazing. I even love the odor that comes from your mouth. I even consider that to be significant. So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, so that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that. Now Allah says, um, <clears throat> إِنَّمَا يَذَرُ شَهْوَتَهُ وَطَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ Look how much the value is. Right? That he is only abandoning his desires, his food and his drink for my sake. Otherwise he wouldn't abandon it. He could eat. But he's doing it for my sake. And Allah values that amazingly well. 
It's like he's stopping eating for me. He's stopping all of these desires for me. For so li. That's why fasting is for me. Wa ana adzibihi. And I'm going to reward him directly for that. Then the Prophet ﷺ tells us something else that Allah has prepared for the fasting people. He says that uh, paradise, the gardens, has a special door among its eight doors that's called Rayyan. Rayyan. La yadkhuluhu illa sa'imun. The fast, fasting people. I mean, there's no door for salat performers. There's no door for hajis. Not to diminish them, but there's no special door for that. When Allah says, I'm going to create this door for fasting people, it just shows you what fasting is. And the reason I'm explaining it this way, because I think when we become professional fasters, after years of years, many fast, many Ramadans and that are belt, as they say, you know, this may be your 15th or 20th or 30th or 40th or 50th Ramadan, you just, you kind of lose, it becomes a bit of a ritual. So I'm just amazed by what the significance is so that we can get a renewed vigor that this Ramadan, this fasting, is going to be better than the before because we're getting an understanding of its significance. Subhanallah. Allah just loves it that He puts a special door for the people who fast. Farhatun. And then the Prophet ﷺ explains something else. Again, all related to Allah, that how does Allah look at fasting? So now the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah promises the fasting person something very amazing. That's why he said, لِسَّائِمِ farhatan." For every fasting person, there are going to be two joys, two excitements, two amazing moments of happiness. One is what you feel in this world. And literally, I, I, I really think of this all the time. You know, when I do iftar, and you know, when you're hungry, and it was those, that long fast, and you're hungry, and then, mashallah, you can have that, that date, and the cold, cool water, and then whatever else people have, your faludas and... All of these other things that you have, right? And you just, it just feels so much better than a, on a normal day, doesn't it? So this is the hadith that comes in mind. لِسَائِمِ farhatana. A fasting person has two joys. One is when he does his iftar. And the second one will be when he meets his Lord. So if anything, if the pleasure that you get at your iftar time, like who enjoys the iftar here? There may be some macho men, no, no, I'm all right, man. You know? <laughs> I was like, it's okay, I can do another, you know, another two hours, it's not a problem. Brother, it's not about that, man. You've done what your Allah has told you, you don't go beyond that. Right? So that joy, I just think, subhanAllah, imagine if this is the joy, the, the joy that you're going to meet with Allah, it, subhanAllah. If Allah has given us this joy here, why shouldn't He give us that joy? So at that time, actually the most relevant dua would be, Oh Allah, the same joy you're giving me now. Like just stop and say, Ya Allah, just remember that ni'mah. Just revel in that pleasure. Just savor it and say, Ya Allah, if this is the pleasure you're giving me now, I want this same pleasure when I meet you. I want this same pleasure when I meet you. And that should be a moment of acceptance, inshaAllah. Don't forget that this year we want to do that, inshaAllah. We want to go from our iftar rather than the focus on the food, which we're going to enjoy, our stomach and our brain enjoys it, but our heart should be focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for that pleasure inshaAllah Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said something else He said that everything has a door like Everything has a door What that means is that you could be doing multiple things But the door is what you'll get the biggest bang for, of, for your buck with So he says everything has a door And the door of worship is fasting The door of worship is fasting Yes, your salat is a worship and your hajj is a worship and your zakat and everything is a worship. But fasting has a very special position when you do that, when you fast. Fasting is the most unique worship out there. Fasting is the most unique worship. So the Prophet ﷺ then said, this is Ibn al-Mubarak uh, has transmitted this hadith, uh, next hadith, which is transmitted by Abu Nu'aym and Bayhaqi in his Shu'ab. The Prophet ﷺ said, No musa'imi ibadah. A fasting person's sleep is worship as well. Because you're in a perpetual... If fasting is a worship, you're perpetually in a state of worship as long as you're hungry. Until iftar. So even when you sleep, it's a worship. That doesn't mean that you just sleep. 
right? But it's to say that at least that's the safeguard against doing anything wrong, against doing anything wrong, so you're better off sleeping. And when you fast, you do feel a bit sleepier, just and then it helps to pass the day. So alhamdulillah. <clears throat> then the famous hadith, right? The famous hadith is Abu Hurairah's hadith related by Bukhari and others that when Ramadan comes in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it so much that he says, okay, I'm going to fling open the doors of paradise. I'm going to shut the doors of hell. You'll have to break in if you want to get into hell in Ramadan. Like, it's not easy to get into because Allah literally makes it that way. It's not easy in Ramadan because shaitan is not around. Right? You have to be really messed up. Uh, to get into hellfire to be written. And then the shayateen are locked up. And then a, an announcer, a herald, uh, announces, Ya baghi al khayri halum. Allah is literally made all the preparations, doors of paradise and hellfire, shaitan locked up. And then he has somebody announce, O oh, one looking for goodness and virtue, come along. Come along, halum. Come forth. And the one who want, who's still looking for evil, you need to take it easy. You need to lower that down. You need to diminish that. So that is exactly what's happening. Everybody feels like that in Ramadan. Like, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't feel like that. As soon as Ramadan is announced, there's just something, a different taste in the air. It's just a different feeling. That's why... You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kulu wa shrabu hani bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. So in paradise you're gonna be told, eat and drink now. Hani You know. Uh, with absolute uh, pleasure and uh, with great welcome and everything because of what you did in the past. Because of how you passed your days in the past. Waqi ibn al-Jarrah, one of the Mufassireen, he says that means that refers to your days of fasting. Because of your days of fasting in this world, when you abandon eating and drinking for the sake of Allah, Allah is going to say now enjoy your food and drink. Enjoy your food and drink in the hereafter. There is a, another narration which Ibn Adi, it's a relatively unknown, very less known narration. Ibn Adi, Abu Nu'aym, Ibn al-Mubarak and others have transmitted this saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he boasts about young people uh, youth how many of you are youth here? MashaAllah it's, uh, I'm not going to judge you it's up to you you can make yourself a youth if you want according to Imam Ibn al Jawzi, until 35 you're a youth so that might help some of you right? Um, so he's saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really boasts to his angel Angels with that youth who is uh, in his service while he's a youth. And uh, he calls out to that youth, he can't hear it, but he calls out to the youth and he says, O oh, youth who is abandoning his pleasures for my sake, who's spending his youth for my sake. You know, uh, folk, he could have been doing so many things because youth, they get misled to do so you are with me, you are in my, in my sight, right? in my view, you are just like some of my angels. So if you can do this in your youth, it's like the action of the angels, at least according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's all that matters anyway, right? Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about the fasting person that Allah says, my angels, Check out my servants. Check out my servant. Look what he's doing. He's abandoning his food, his pleasure, his desire, and his drink for my sake. Allah just loves that. He's like, look at what these guys are doing. MashaAllah. Look at what these guys are doing. Allah is, just loves it when that happens. So when we're fasting and it gets tiring, just think what Allah must be feeling. And that should make us feel good. That If Allah's feeling good, why aren't we feeling good? Why are we feeling miserable? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting, reveling, enjoying the fact that people are abandoning. And uh, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to, it's a long thing to do. It's a long worship. It's a very unique worship. That's why uh, regarding the verse uh, in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَّا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِّن قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ 
جزاء بما كانوا يعملون. No nafs knows what has been hidden for them from the joys of the sight in the hereafter. Things that will just gladden you, give you ultimate bliss. As a reward for what they used to do, one of the tafsirs of that is that this is the fasting. It's for the fasting that you'll get that reward. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Sabirun are given their reward without any kind of, rec- without any kind of enumeration. So that's why Imam Ghazali says, uh, his reward, لا يدخل تحت وهم وتقدير The reward of a fasting person can't come, that can't come under any kind of mathematics, any kind of accounting. It's just Allah gives it. You can't, you can't, take, you can't reckon that. Just, just leave it to Allah. It's going to be some huge amount. It's going to be more than satisfying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. Now, <clears throat> Imam Ghazali then says that this is absolutely befitting the fast. There's nothing to be surprised about. This is a completely appropriate and this is exactly what a fasting is made for because fasting, even though it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's so honored because of the attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all other worships are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anyway. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fasting is for me, just like Masjids are all the house of Allah, but the Kaaba is especially his house. So that gets so what is the reason why fasting then takes that special position compared to all the other worships which are all for Allah? Why do you do any other worship? You have to do it for Allah. Do it for anybody else, you don't get a reward for it. It's shirk, it's it's a minor form of shirk in fact. So what is it that makes <clears throat> what is it that makes fasting so special that Allah has owned it? And claimed it and said, this is mine. Even though they're all his anyway. Every, every, every worship is for him. So Imam Ghazali says for two reasons. Number one, <clears throat> it's the nature of the worship, right? It's a very unique worship. Because as-sawmu kaffun wa tarqun. Fasting is an abstinence and an abandonment. What is fasting? Fasting is an inactivity. Not an activity, it's an inactivity. It's an inaction. <clears throat> Meaning, you just sit and do nothing. Literally. Like you don't do something that you don't eat, you don't drink, etc. So it's a kafun wa tarkun. Wa huwa fi nafsihi sirrun. This is his wording. He says that intrinsically is the secret. That is the secret of it. Because in it, laysa fihi amalun yushahad. There's no actual action you can witness in fasting. You'd have to be told he's fasting. Otherwise, you're like, he's fasting. Unless you look just miserable. Right, um, which is actually not the way to to look anyway. Right, especially not after what we've read. And Allah is happy, and you're miserable. Subhanallah. Let no fasting person be miserable this year. So, laysa fihi amalun yushahad. It's not something that you can actually observe the action, because jamiu amali taat bi mashhadin min al khalki wal mar'a. Every other deed there is, whether it's hajj or zakat, it's there. You can YouTube it. You can camera it. You can't take videos of fasting people. They're just regular people. It, there's no video of a fast. Right? Oh, let's take the iftar. Well, how do you know they were fasting? You know? So it, it, it's just something that is completely... Now, he's building up to something. He's saying, that means, وَالصَّوْمُ لَا يَرَاهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى a proper fast, only Allah will know and observe it. Because with everybody else, you could just claim it and not really be fasting. But only Allah, if you actually fast, only Allah knows it. Because it's an internal state of pure, of pure abstinence, pure sabr, pure patience. That's the first reason, right? Why Allah has... Uh, claimed fasting for himself among everything else. The second one he says is an active reason of what fasting does for somebody. The purpose of fasting. Why fasting was legislated. Ya amanu kutiba kama kutiba 
fasting prescribed upon you as it was for those before you so that you can gain taqwa, right? Keep that in mind. But what Imam Ghazali says, the second reason is It is the means of vanquishing the enemy of Allah. How do you vanquish an enemy of Allah by fasting? Right. Because the shaitan's main instrument and means he uses to mislead people is uh, desires. For different forms of desire, whether that be food desires, drink desires, or sexual desires. And desires, وَإِنَّمَا تَقَوَّ الشَّهَوَاتُ بِالْأَكْلِ وَالشُّرْبِ the more you eat and drink, the more the desires grow because it, there's a relationship with food. Especially if you don't have uh, halal and tayyib food. Then that's even worse. Right? If you don't have food on which dhikr and halal and you know, then it's going to be even worse. But food in general, while we do need it to survive, but eating too much assists because it make, makes you sloth, it makes you sluggish, it makes you lazy, and uh, it just takes the whole vigor out. وَلِذَٰلِكَ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That's why, that, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said regarding the shaitan إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَيَجْرِي مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمَ مَجْرَ الدَّمْ Because the shaitan courses through the human body just like blood does Right? That is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ it's a, That's a, everybody knows that hadith Now in one narration it adds the following And according to research it actually shows that it's probably one of the narrators who added this As a advice of how to stop the shaitan or how to restrict the causeway in the body of the shaitan for the shaitan otherwise he's got access to the body just like blood does how do you tighten that and restrict that فَضَيِّكُوا مَجَارِيَهُ بِالْجُورِ restrict his coursing through the body through hunger so fast often now as we know in Ramadan there's definitely a connection because Allah gets rid of the shaitan tells us to fast so you've got two things going on when the shaitan is out, Allah says fast seven days, uh, six days of shawal. And then there's recommendations of fasting. Otherwise, may Allah make that easy for us. But yes, so tighten and restrict the pathway of the shaitan through hunger. Aisha radiallahu anha, once the Prophet said to her, Dawimi qar'a babil jannah. Make sure that you're constantly knocking on the door of jannah. One day you'll get in. Constantly knock on the door of jannah. Said how? Bimada. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam biljur by hunger. So hunger, we're told here, and this is scientific anyway, right? <coughs> Foods make us react in different ways. Of course, we need to eat to stay healthy and to stay uh, to survive. And in fact, it's haram to starve yourself. It's actually haram to starve yourself. Literally, that's what the jurists say. It's haram to starve yourself. But then they tell you that you must eat enough to be able to stand up and do your worships and do your deeds and do your acts. So that, that, that's what it is. Um, there is a, uh, something re, uh, not from Imam Ghazali but from others uh, related. Thabit al, Thabit al Bunani relates this. He says that once it reached us that Iblis, uh, Iblis came in front and confronted Zakaria alayhi salam. Iblis confronted Zakaria alayhi salam, saw on him multiple different things hanging off him, like tools to mislead people essentially, right? He said, what are all of these things that I see on you? Oh, these are the different pleasures and distractions and lusts and other things that I attack the humans with. These are my various tools basically, I'm carrying my tools with me, right? So Yahya alayhi salam said, Anything for me in there? So he said, no. He said, can you get me anyhow in this regard? He said, sometimes when you satiate yourself, when you fill yourself up too much, when you, I don't know what that level is, right, according to Zakaria, but when you've <clears throat> satisfied yourself with food, essentially, and what we do is that we make you lazy. We then cause you laziness so that you don't want to do salat and dhikr you don't feel like doing your extra nawafil or your fard even it depends on different people he said is there anything else he said no he said okay that's fine I'm never going to satiate myself from now Zakaria salam said I'm never going to satiate myself if only we can act on that with our health would improve Allah Ta'ala make it like that 
<clears throat> so shaitan comes at us through, through food, but nobody talks about that. Right? Food is never a problem. Right? I mean, it is a problem, but you know, nobody ever talks about that. That's the shaitan using it. So anyway, that is what Imam Ghazali says. The reason why fasting is so special for Allah is, number one, it is an internal state that can only be for Allah. And number two, it helps against the enemy of Allah. So, then Imam Ghazali says that when fasting specifically then is so effective against shaitan and to stop his pathways, it, that's why it's so specially connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it has that special designation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says that if you now fast for that reason, you're assisting Allah. It's a weird thing to say. But if you're fasting with this thing in mind now, meaning if you're fasting to get rid of the shaitan, you're assisting Allah against his enemy. Because remember, shaitan has sworn enemy and said, I'm going to mislead people, I'm going to disobey. So now if we don't obey the shaitan and we actually start fasting, we actually start fasting, we're actually assisting Allah in uh, 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 in, in shaitan not getting his wish which inshallah he won't anyway right however then he says again Imam Ghazali is just a psychologist right he, then he says وَنُصْرَةُ تَعَلَى مَوْقُوفَةٌ عَلَى النُصْرَةِ له. you can't assist Allah except that he's going to assist you where did you get that from Allah says إِن تَنْصُرُ اللَّهِ يَنْصُرْكُمْ if you assist Allah Allah is going to help you وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ and he's going to make firm and stabilize your footing. So by us doing this, we're selfishly assisting Allah so that he assists us, almost. If that's what, if you, it's a benefit. That's why with Allah, Allah wants to see you beginning. You making your initial effort and making that effort at the beginning. وَالْجَزَاءُ بِالْهِدَايَةِ then he gives the guidance as his reward. But he wants to see us doing, taking the first step. That's why Allah says, Those who make an effort in our path, who do something to get in our path, we're, gonna, we're going to guide them to our paths. We, we'll do the rest. You just start it off. You just take the steps. We'll do the rest. That's what Allah has promised. That, that, another famous verse says the same thing. Allah says, Inna Allah Allah doesn't change the state of a people, that which is with a people, until they change themselves. Essentially saying, you make the effort. Don't just sit and wait and say, Allah is going to change us one day. You make the effort, then Allah will open up the paths and become... You think today that, you know, I can't do this. Everybody's against me. My, what will my family say? What will my spouse say? What will my children say? What will my society, community, and culture say? You make the effort, there will be difficulty, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it such that you'll be laughing all the way to Jannah, inshallah. These are the verses. Look how Imam Ghazali puts them in perspective, weaves them together to show what Allah is telling us in all of these different verses. And he says, the way now that you're going to act on these hadith, and uh, sorry, these verses, what change are you going to make? You just focus on breaking your desires. Just don't fulfill all of your desires. Start breaking them. Start shortening them. Start decreasing them. Because that is where the shaitan likes to graze in your desires. Shorten them, lessen them and decrease them. And shaitan will have less of a bandwidth to work in. And it says, as long as you keep a place open for the shaitan, you can never enjoy the full jalal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It won't open up for you because shaitan is there acting as a veil. He's a mahjub. You are veiled. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another narration, If the shayateen, lawla anna shayateen yahumuna ala qulubi bani adam, la nadharu ila malakuti samawat. Imam Ahmad has transmitted this. That if the shaitan were not constantly taking part in an attack on the hearts of the human being, they would have been able to observe the secrets of the heavens. Um, that's why you can see now that if to stop all of this, 
to stop the shaitan's attack. If fasting is so effective, now it puts into perspective the hadith which says that fasting is a shield. That's how fasting becomes a shield now. You must have heard this hadith before. This puts it in perspective. And then Imam Ghazali has, uh, which I won't be able to cover today, I'll cover in a subsequent lecture, but he talks about the fasting of three different types of people, and I'll just describe that. And then, inshallah, there'll be a subsequent lesson we'll have somewhere, uh, and inshallah it'll go up. He says that uh, in terms of fasting, there are three levels, uh, three people, three categories of people in terms of fasting, three levels. So, sawmul umum, this is the fasting of the general public, Sawmul khusus, the fasting of the special elect people, and then the fasting of the very, very, very special elect people. The very special, of the special ones, which is usually the prophets and so on, right? That's a very difficult one. He says, the first one is the standard fast, standard package. Stay away from filling your stomach and your uh, sexual desires. That's what people do. From this time to this time, I'm not going to uh, engage in food, drink, and sexual intercourse. That's what the basic fast is, basic package. It says the second package is Sawmul Khusus, which is to avoid all of this and also keep guard of the ears and the sight and the tongue and the hand and the feet and every other limb of the body. So it goes beyond the basics. There's a lot more thrown into there. It's a long, it's a be better package, and that that's what it is. And now the third one is a really strange one. It's ajib. the the fa the fasting of the elite. This is a fast of the heart. This is a fast of the heart. To abstain from all lowly thoughts. To abstain from all dunyawi bad thoughts in fact to abstain from any thought about anyone besides Allah it's just Allah 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 and nothing else how do they do iftar then I couldn't get this first but how do they do iftar the only way they do iftar which is not praiseworthy by the way right is when they think about anyone besides Allah and the last day. That's when they do iftar. This is a perpetual state. This is not a physical state. This is when their heart is fully into it. وَيَحْصُلُ الْفِطْرُ فِي هَذَا الصَّوْمِ بِالْفِكْرِ فِي مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَبِالْفِكْرِ فِي الدُّنْيَا And for them to start focusing on the world, they'll do iftar. Unless they focus on the dunya is for the akhirah, then that continues as well. Because that is Zadul Akhirah. That's a provision for the hereafter as well. Now, for them, there's another rule. There's another rule. One of them has said for his group of people, subhanAllah, مَن تَحَرَّكَتْ هِمَّتُهُ بِالتَّصَرُّفِ فِي نَهَارِهِ لِتَدْبِيرِ مَا يُفْتِرُ عَلَيْهِ كُتِبَتْ عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئَةً For such people, if any of them start to get focused in their daytime to try to plan what they're going to do iftar on, that's written as a sin against them. Not for us, by the way. Right? So don't, don't say, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do any work. Right? This is for the people at that level who are in this state of perpetual fasting. That, that fasting is not fasting. It's, a, it's the different fasting. It's not about food and drink anymore. They're eating, by the way. They're not, they're not, they're not staying hungry. Um, they, they, are, they may be fasting as proper fast, but that's a fast of the heart. That's what he's talking about. May Allah subhanahu wa says, هَذِهِ رُتْبَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالْمُقَرَّبِينَ This is only the status of the Anbiya, the Siddiqeen, and the Muqarrabeen. And he says that we, 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 وَلَا نُطَوِّلُ النَّظَرَ فِي تَفْصِيلِ ذَلِكَ قَوْلًا This is not something that we're going to spend too much time in trying to explain to you in words. وَلَكِنْ فِي تَحْقِيقِهِ عَمَلًا He's like, we're going to try to get this state in action. SubhanAllah. Look what Imam Ghazali stated is. Right? Because that is when you fully focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every way and you completely turn away from Qulillah. Say Allah, thumma dharhum fi khawdihim yalabun. 
You just say Allah and then you just leave those guys playing around, right, in whatever they're engrossed in. You say Allah and you just do what you have to do. So, <clears throat> inshallah, we'll discuss these in a, uh, the other two categories in a bit more detail, inshallah, in another lesson. Uh, but uh, that's enough uh, for today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this renewed vigor and a renewed understanding and perspective on fasting and may that enrich and upgrade our fast this year and make it completely different from any year before it and make us close to him. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak ya adil jalali wa ikram Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghif ya hannan ya mannan la ilaha إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين جزا الله عنا محمد ما هو أهله يا غفار يا فتاح يا ستار يا حفيظ يا سلام يا لطيف يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا الله have mercy on us يا الله bless us يا الله يا الله يا الله have your special attention on us يا الله special focus we require of you يا الله we ask for your generosity and your benevolence your kindness oh الله we ask you for your love يا الله we ask you for your love Ya Allah, forgive us our wrongdoings, our mistakes, our excesses. Ya Allah, our negligence, our heedlessness. Oh Allah, our transgressions and our sins, our crimes. Ya Allah, forgive us our violations. Oh Allah, forgive us our violations. Ya Allah, we ask you for your special attention. And we ask that you forgive us all of our wrongdoings and especially those that we have forgotten. Oh Allah, clean us and cleanse us, purify us. Oh Allah, make us of those who are purified. Oh Allah, we struggle with so many things in our life. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, assist us against the shaitan. Close the doors of shaitan. Close the doors of our heart to shaitan. Ya Allah, we ask to assist us. And Ya Allah, we ask that you allow us to fast properly. Let you fast. We, that we, uh, we are allowed to fast in the most enhanced and most efficient way. So that we can get the full benefit that you would like to give us from this fast. That you gave to your awliya and your close ones, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us, Ya Allah, grant us more than we may be worthy of, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us more than we may be worthy of. Ya Allah, make us worthy of your true bounties. O oh Allah, bless our brothers and sisters around the world and remove their oppression, those who are being suppressed and those who are being murdered and killed. O oh Allah, grant them much greater than what they're losing and what they have lost. O oh Allah, grant them their sabr and patience and their dignity. O oh Allah, grant them a wonderful Ramadan. Oh Allah, grant them a wonderful Ramadan and grant them relief. Ya Allah, grant us a Ramadan that we've never experienced before, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, grant us a blessed Ramadan, one that in which we're closer to you than we've ever been before, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, enhance this Ramadan, enhance everything about this Ramadan for us. Oh Allah, bless our teachers and bless all those who've helped and guided us, Ya Allah, and all of these authors whose books we read. Oh Allah, bless them abundantly. Allow us... Ya Allah, allow us to be as productive as them. Allow us to be as beneficial as them. Ya Allah, allow us to be protected like them. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask that you protect us from protect us from all the wrongs which are out there. Protect, uh, protect us from stopping others from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, we ask that you make us a means of goodness rather than a means of evil in this world. Ya Allah, you protect us and our families and our children and our descendants until the Day of Judgment from all the evils which are out there. O oh Allah, keep the Quran and Sunnah and Tawheed and grant us uh, rushdana. Ya Allah, grant us our guidance and O oh Allah, grant us a right. Show us the truth as the truth. Allow us to fulfill it and show us the wrong as the wrong and allow us to abstain from it. O oh Allah, bless all of those who are here. O oh Allah, bless all those who are listening. Bless the entire Muslim world. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, give us so much barakah in these next few days that we're able to complete whatever chores need to be complete so that when we get into Ramadan, we are free to enjoy Ramadan. Ya Allah, make this Ramadan a really, really blessed Ramadan. Ya Allah, make it one in which we really, we really take the most that we have ever taken from a Ramadan and make every subsequent Ramadan better than that. Ya Allah, O oh Allah, grant us shifa from our various ailments. O oh Allah, those who have passed away, Mawlana Adam have just passed away. O oh Allah, raise his status. <clears throat> ya Allah, grant him maghfirah, grant him jannat al-firdaus. O oh Allah, make his children sadaqa jariya for him. And O oh Allah, all of our other deceased, Ya Allah, bless them all. Raise their status. Allow us to also have a good death, Ya Allah. Allow us to also have a good death. Allow us to spend our time in useful pursuits 
rather than wasting pursuits. Oh Allah, oh Allah, accept our du'as. Oh Allah, accept our du'as and give us another of your karam. Ya Allah, assist us, subhana rabbika. Rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind. You can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.